I think we should be uh, all good to go. If I got, yeah, I've got, I've got the little steel book in the background. I've made, added a little, you know, a little bit of extra detail just for the background for this, just to, <laughs> you know, show off. Because yeah, I'm trying very hard not to nerd out right now. Because this, like I said, I don't want to be like super kiss arsey or whatever. But like I said, this was a big thing for me managing to get this up with you. So I'm very grateful that you. Uh, well, I'm very flattered. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Redcast. It feels good to say that, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to the show. Today, I have got a brand new interview for you in episode two of season three of the Redcast. As I've said previously, we're going for a more staggered release now. So whenever there is a guest that comes along I want to interview, I'll do the interview and release it whenever it might be. That's why there might be more time between episodes, as proven by it being three months since the last one. But either way, welcome to this episode where I am chatting to someone that was very, very high on my list of guests that I really wanted to bring onto the show. And that is Erica Moore the voice behind Alex Chen in Life is Strange True Colors. Although voice doesn't cut it, she was also in the motion capture for the character. She basically just is Alex Chen in every way possible and the lead of my now favorite game of all time, Life is Strange True Colors. This was a very big interview for me. We tried for a long time to arrange this and get it set up and I'm glad we finally managed to get it working because it was an absolute blast to get a chat to her. I spent about an hour fanboying about it while we were having the interview, which probably will come through during the conversation. We talk all about her getting into the world of acting, landing the role of Alex Chen as as well as the development path and release of Life is Strange True Colors and all the responses that have come out as a result of it. It's a really, really big Life is Strange episode for anyone out there who loves those games. It's very big for me, but either way, I really hope you enjoy this episode. As always, it was available early for my patrons. If you want to go support me over there, you can visit www.patreon.com forward slash Red Archer Live and donate as little as a pound to get early access to this kind of content going forward. So without any further ado, let's get right into the episode and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome, Erica. How are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. This is, yeah, I'm I'm very, very excited for this one. This is one that we've been talking about for a while. I'm glad we managed to get it started. So, yeah, I've got, oh God, so much that I could talk to you about. Like, just trying to keep it to a certain runtime is going to be a challenge because the amount of things I could say is ridiculous. But um, what I want to start off with is, obviously, it's, it's talking about origins, okay? And what was interesting me with you was obviously I want to know how you got into the world of acting, but it said on your website that you returned to the world of acting after a long stint as a management consultant. So what was going on there? What what was the bridge from there to acting? Well, I did like plays and musicals in high school. Um, and after I graduated, I, I didn't do any acting until, gosh, I was a full grown adult. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of went into the corporate world. I've been a business consultant since I graduated from college and I got back into acting because I was just sick of not having anything creative in my life and I remembered how much fun I had back in high school and so I signed up for an adult acting class I think I even coerced one of my my good friends to join with me so that I didn't have to do it by myself um, and so that's how I got back into it um, prior to that I I hadn't had any training or exposure to um, to that at all and I got the audition for colors because my instructor was the casting director for the game and she reached out to me I mean after after the class was finished and was just like hey there's this audition I think you would be great for this role can you make it work and yeah that's how <laughs> that's how it all happened that's crazy I always love when you get these little like kind of weird coincidences that lead to such big things it's crazy how stuff like that can work out it's brilliant i find it so cool because like most of the actors i've spoken to the past are kind of like you know they're often just like you know i wanted to get into acting that kind of thing for a while but it's it's interesting to get like a different angle that you know you did something different and then went you know what let's just go taking the spin at acting you know yeah and i you know i don't regret it at all. I don't regret my stint in the corporate world. I actually still uh, juggle both performance and consulting uh, because I work for an amazing company who, when I went to them saying like, I'm going to have to quit because I got this amazing opportunity and I don't really know what it is, but I, I have to, I would kick myself if I didn't, if I didn't follow through with it. Um, this company uh, was basically like, 
let's figure out a way to make it work. And so they were able to be flexible and yeah, it's it's been it's been really great, especially because of the pandemic when everything was shut down and all productions were shut down, everything kind of ground to a halt. I was able to fall back on, you know, my other career yeah. that uh, that I have and it was it was definitely a blessing. Sure. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. So when when did you actually get cast as Alex? When did that happen? Was that before the pandemic? Yeah, that was uh july 2018 wow yeah so that's been in the works for a long time then yes it it has and it, i didn't quite realize how long it takes to make a game and how many times uh any given game is on the precipice of of being completely scrapped um so it was certainly a an eye-opening experience and i wouldn't trade it for anything Oh no, it sounds fantastic. Wait, so did like True Colors as a story gets nearly get scrapped a couple of times or Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um I think that you know, you're not me, but the but Deck Nine, the development team working with Square and, and you know, trying to create uh this brand new story with brand new characters. Um I think that there were a lot of moments where, you know, any any number of things could have led to the, the game being dissolved, but you know we've we have such an amazing team at Deck Nine who are really committed to the story that that they wanted to tell and the integrity of the game in its entirety. That you know it it trundled over the finish line, and I'm so glad it did. You and me both, honestly, it's. What what a game, honestly. Like I said, I, I'm going to try not to just, like, talk about everything I love about it because we'll be here for literally hours. But <laughs> honestly, no, you're talking to someone who, like, the first Life is Strange game had been my favorite game for years. I absolutely adored it. I love it to bits. You, I can't, like, show you right now. I'll send you the picture later. But literally on my wall, there is a giant, like, mural of the one of the T-shirts from the first game. It takes off, That's honestly, cool. it is taller than me. And trying to get it at home <laughs> on a train, you can only imagine how difficult it was because the width of it under my arm was going towards the floor. So I'm like walking down <laughs> through because I'm from like Liverpool area. So I'm walking right down through Liverpool city centre with this giant thing and everyone's just staring at me going, what is that? And it's the funniest thing. That's commitment. Honestly, right? that's yeah. Love that's right that's there. dedication to it. That's dedication. Appreciate but, it. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I've loved the game since then. It's been about like three, three, four years since I, start, I got into them. And then when I saw the trailer for True Colors, I don't know, I just had a funny feeling about it right from the start. It just... It looked fantastic. I really, really liked I had a good feeling about it. And it's honestly, I think it's better than the first one, which I don't know if it's like a bold statement for people to make, but... It is, because I know that there was a lot of trepidation um, when the game was announced mm. at the top of, of 2021. And change is hard. And, you know, people didn't know if there was any crossover with the you know, the original titles yep. and the, the characters that they loved. And so I'm so glad that we brought Steph back and that we were able to convince Katie to reprise her role. Um, because, yeah, the, the fans and, and the people who love, you know, Life is Strange as a world and as a, a storytelling device... Um, you know they have high expectations and and rightly so i think don't nod and you know the the other creatives and talent that brought the previous game to life like they set the previous games to life they set the bar incredibly incredibly high yeah no they are they're fantastic they really are on the topic then so how much did you know about life is strange when you get casted when you got casted sorry did you know much about it I knew nothing. I, it was I didn't even know that I was auditioning for the lead. I was like, surely they would not have this bozo <laughs> running like leading this game. It's probably like a tertiary character, you know, like not named. And so it wasn't until I think um, callbacks, mm. and I don't remember when in callbacks that Webb was like. No, you dum dum. This is this is for the lead. 
<laughs> oh my god, I can only imagine your reaction. You know, wait, no, what? I'm I'm gonna have more than five yeah. lines, huh? <laughs> And at that point, I was like, well, I don't trust any of you people in this room now because this is insane. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was the audition where, like, part of it was, um, you know, come in with a monologue, but perform it in as as if you were Alex or this character. We didn't know it was Alex at the time. Yeah. And so I did. And Webb asked if I had – he was like, okay, that's great. Do you have – like another monologue we just we just want to see more and i was like uh no i i, I just have the one oh <laughs> um, my. i didn't know that we were supposed to come with more i read the instructions and i followed them to a t um because it was the first callback i I'd, I'd ever had i was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants at that point <laughs> oh wow so, um, based on that, then, did you go and play the games or watch anything about them? Like, how much research in the past ones did you do before, like, while you were getting cast? Yeah, I mean, I have to admit that locomotion in video games absolutely befuddles me. Uh, the last, <laughs> <laughs> like, locomotively driven game that I played was uh, GoldenEye, and it was terrible. I was that person who was, like, trying to turn around, jumping and, like, running into a corner and then would constantly get shot. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't I wasn't playing the game. Um, <laughs> so that's that'll scar a girl. Um, so I watched, like... That Garris played parts of uh, Life is Strange 2 because that came out while we were yeah, in development. Yeah, of course, I forget. Yeah, just to, you know, get a feel for the world and kind of the, the style of, of this sort of video game because I had zero exposure to it. I didn't even know that this was a type of video game that had existed. Yeah. It was like, it's Tetris or it's GoldenEye or Halo, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the three yeah. gaming genres, that's it. Tetris, Golden Eye, and Halo. Perfect. That's it now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah. laughs> what a selection. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, some good, some great uh, gaming experience there. And that makes you an absolute, uh, honestly, an absolute expert. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, and what's funny is I'm being asked by my consulting company now because we do like technical and just straight business mm. and we have like a, a gaming industry pillar and I'm being asked to like join and speak at these things. And I'm like, uh, do you guys know that I, I, I was just the actor. Like I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Apparently, I'm an expert now, and you gotta fake it till you make it. Exactly, I suppose. exactly. That's the way to do. It. <laughs> yeah. Go along with it. That's they'll just believe the way you. that I truck through life. Yeah. You just say anything now, and they'll go, "Oh yeah, yes, yes, no, perfect." Yes. I've been looking at it all yes. wrong. Yeah, no. Yeah, and I've always wanted to like be at this point in my career where like people would just see me as an expert. Um, I didn't quite know that it would be for video games. Never saw that one coming, but you know, here we are. And so there's sometimes things happen out of the blue, you know? They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it all worked out in the end. It all worked out in the end, you know? It did. Yes. Um, so next thing I want to talk about uh, is re- with regards to performance capture, because the early Life is Strange games, I, I don't know how much you know about the-, the budget of the first one, but a lot of people commented, you know, the- a lot of the money in the early games went more into the getting the talent on board. So the actors, that kind of thing. And, you know, there's been criticism in the past sometimes for how the lip syncing works and movements and things. This, from my what I've read and seen and heard, is the first Life is Strange game with full motion capture, performance capture, all that stuff which to me blew me away when they did the reveal because I thought, wow, but like that's a massive step up. Because I think they showed the segment, I think it was you with the broom doing the you the guitar section with Gabe. That was yeah. just fantastic to see. So what was it like for you, not only being the voice actor, but also being the walk as well as the talk for Alex? Like, How did that change things up for you? What made it interesting? Sure. I think it helped that I didn't know that this wasn't how... These types of games were captured previously. Mm. Um, so I think if if I had been, say, in Rihanna's shoes and I had done body and then voice separately, yeah. um, or I know that there were a couple characters where 
the the body actor was completely separate from the voice actor, which I know is not uncommon. Mm. Um, in how some of these games have been and currently are captured. So I didn't know any better. So it was just like acting. I think it would have been way worse. Uh, We wouldn't have been able to, I think, create a game about empathy where we're trying to, you know, show true, genuine emotion Mm. um, if it had been parsed that way. So I'm glad that they got the bargain basement prices on the talent and <laughs> put the money <laughs> into the tech part. Because to be totally honest, the technical piece is the coolest part of, of what we did, in in my opinion. Yeah, it, it looks like you can get so much more involved in the role, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, I mean, there were certainly technical pieces that um, I had to learn or mocap in order mm. to make a, you know, a, a day on set run smoothly. Um, but from a from a performance perspective, it felt very seamless. Yeah, I can imagine. And there must be so there's got to be some scenes that are weird to do in motion capture, like especially like the romance scenes. Like, how do they work in performance capture? I'm just really interested to know. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, I've heard before that, you know, filming intimate or romantic scenes are the opposite of that. And now I know that's true. <laughs> it was just so very, <laughs> it's almost clinical. Um, <laughs> because you, you have this like fucking, ri- I'm sorry, can I? Yeah, all I, good, all good. Great. I, I always forget to ask that. Um, so you have this rig on mm. your head. And so you can't get close to the person that you're supposed to be hugging even let alone kissing and so we had to break it up where we did uh the full scene like what the the romance for me and Steph Katie and I had to take off the rig we did a couple takes of of the kiss or the embrace or whatever you choose Mm. and we picked the one you know the the take that we wanted and then we had to go watch it and say okay Hand goes behind the head on, like, beat two. Your hand goes on my waist at beat four. Yeah. Um, so that we could basically mimic it with the helmet and the, the face cam on while turned away from each other. And while Chad, the head animator, is there with, like, his, his iPhone looking like a total creeper. <laughs> because he needed to get, right, he needed to get certain specific things for his animation team yeah. like the fingers or you know the eyes or the mouth i i don't know what exactly he needed but i think he got it that's amazing because that's what i was wondering i was thinking don't you normally have a rig in front of your head like how how does a kiss work when you've got that in front of you i was thinking i was like wondering how is that going to work so you're literally just mimicking the kiss <laughs> that is yeah. amazing Oh uh-huh. my god! It's not hot. The beauty of performance it's capture. Not hot oh at no, all. it sounds very hot to me. It sounds amazing. <laughs> it sounds like the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh my god! <laughs> Got everything I wanted and more out of that question. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh my god! Honestly, that is fantastic. <laughs> so, what was then? So let's jump forward to the reveal then, which was God. What was it now? June twenty twenty one. It feels, honestly, the time has just gone by at a ridiculous speed. I know it was earlier than that. No, because it wasn't at E3. It was in March. I think it was in March. March. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh, my God. I-, I can't believe it's been that long. I really can't because the time just... Because I-, I follow an account on Twitter that literally counts down the days to Life is Strange Things. I remember it's starting off at like 180 days and then it just slowly ticked <laughs> down and you'd be like, hang on, there's like 10 days left. They're doing the same thing now for the remasters. It's it's so weird. Yeah. You don't even notice sometimes and you go, oh, yeah, it's almost here. Um, but... <laughs> From your perspective, when that reveal went out, what was the reaction like? Well, it was it was funny. The there was a huge break in in when I finished pickups. I think my last shoot was September of 2020, mm. and then I was contacted by Square 
in January of 2021 to say, hey, we need to schedule some time with you and Zach Garris to film the the launch yeah. and I was like oh yeah we made a game <laughs> <laughs> right. why didn't you said that to them oh, they right, just right, go, right, you've right. been on it for two years how have you forgotten yeah. this <laughs> well, there was like such a gap and yeah. I mean in the the hole that was the pandemic when we're you know all in our isolated little bubbles mm. um and you know, by that time, my part was over and it was, you know, handed off to other teams uh, in the pipeline yeah. to get the game made where, you know, I continued to live my life and had kind of stepped away from performance just because it wasn't happening. Yeah, the phone's not really ringing <laughs> um, when everyone's at, at home, point. is it? Yeah. And so, I mean, there were certainly some dark moments <laughs> between the ending and when Square reached out where I was like, it could still fucking get canceled. They could still <laughs> be like, nope. Because at that point, oh right, nobody knew that officially that um, a third game was was being made. And so... Um, yeah, when Square reached out, I was like, oh, cool, this is happening. What was it about again? Like, what did, what, what made it into the game? Uh, yeah, honestly. So, if it had, oh my yeah. God, that, that, I can't imagine how that would feel if you'd done all that work and then they went, actually, yeah, about that. Uh, like. yeah. Mm, so sorry. So I was relieved that... Mm. You know, the whole thing didn't get canned. Um, and it was kind of like yeah, shaking off cobwebs to be like, oh, yeah, this piece of work that it did a long time ago. It felt like a long time for me. I'm sure it just it did not feel like that for Zach. Um, and then <sighs> Zach and Webb and Katie, people who've been through a release before, um, a launch before, had been telling me what it would be like uh, throughout the course of creating the game, but it really prepares you for for it. And I, I'm a fairly private person, and so, like, Katie badgering me to get on Twitter was a real big <laughs> step for me. <laughs> I was going to say, did um, Katie play a part in you getting Twitter? I felt like that was likely. Of course. Yeah. I'm only on Twitter because of Katie. And I'm, like, a very bad Twitterer. I, like I, I'm like not consistent. I'll like abandon it for days or weeks. Like I just I I'm not an influencer. That's for damn sure. Um, but the the reception was the reception that I saw was so warm and um, people were excited about it. I have received so many messages. Yeah, you were pumped about it. <laughs> So many messages about what, you know, how pumped people were for for this next installation, how excited people were for um, women of color to be at the helm of of the playable character part of the game. And, you know, my my first experience with this fandom was think representative of what the fandom is which is like warm and goofy and self-effacing yep. and just incredibly welcoming and I, I couldn't have asked for a softer landing yeah honestly the fandom is so lovely i think it's i think it's brilliant just the excitement that was building up for it was <laughs> was you could feel it like the tension the excitement coming off it the way they were teasing it you know it's like three days to you a new <laughs> character two days and they're like giving you actual little bits that was like Oh my god, no, just tell us, just tell us. It was just brilliant. Because, yeah, yeah it, I think there was some speculation going around that Deck Nine were doing another one. I seem to remember there was a, a news article at some point that said they'd been hired on to make a game for an already established Square Enix franchise. So everyone, myself included, kind of went, well, they've already done one Life is Strange game, so I wonder. And like, But it was just speculation, yeah. you know? And I remember that... But you used those yeah. context clues. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the reveal because I didn't expect it because I think I think something had leaked a, a day before or something and I completely missed it which I'm glad because normally I end up seeing every leak for everything and it annoys me so I had no idea and when it popped up it was Deccan I was like so they are doing another game okay fab and then just everything about it was yeah it was so good I think it was just the way that everything seems so similar to the first one because the first one is just like the 
the trend setter, you know, the cult classic. I, I think it was really good how much it mirrored that that game. I think it was really, really good. I really liked it. And But I, I think you get that idea already. I think you might have got that impression, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm um, starting to. <laughs> starting to pick up on that. Yeah, maybe just a little bit, you know. Maybe I should just try and push it home a little bit more. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know whether you, did you see that I did um I did an Alex cosplay. I went to a Comic Con a couple of weekends ago. I did I think, see that. You did, you I wasn't fantastic. sure if you'd seen it. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, that was that was so cool. I am still genuinely considering getting the hand tattoos, and I'm not like I've always been against yeah. tattoos because like I always worry if I regret it later. I'm one of those people who's like, well, I still like it there, like six months later. But I did like Ooh. I did it as a temporary thing with a mark, and I went, no, I like this, and I'm like still because like, for good. years I've been thinking I want the rewind on my arm from the first game. Like, have you seen like you know, the time rewinding symbol? Yeah, I was like. That'd be oh. cool on my arm. And now this has come along. I'm like, no, this, the star looks good. I like that. <laughs> but yeah, that so Alex good. is so fucking cool. Oh, it's honestly, <laughs> I was, it was so nice to just do it. Just to put, put it together was, was so cool. And I love it. And yeah, uh, yeah, I like the game. Okay. I think I've made that clear. Move on. <laughs> Next question before I, I embarrass myself even further. <laughs> <laughs> How well, am I holding up here? Am I doing me. okay? I prefer that it's you. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh honest to god oh blimey so so keeping on the topic of discussing responses to things let's jump forward then to september okay so the game's released what was the reception like then how how was everything on your end how was it was like seeing everyone playing the game and talking about it and across the board praising it the reviews were insane for it i was just so proud of Mm. Of the entire team like it was truly a labor of love the devs at deck nine fucking love what they do and they're so good at it and i think that a combination of both of those things really comes through um and so you know every time like the narrative team wins something or you know kara is is recognized for her amazing artistry it just I really believe in in that dev team and I just it's it's wonderful to me to see them being recognized for everything that they did and I watched a couple yeah a couple <laughs> playthroughs I was actually on set I was back on deck at deck 9 the day it launched and so web had um, he was playing <laughs> this Twitch streamer named Brody, his playthrough of it. And this guy is fucking hysterical. He's <laughs> hilarious. We were just all dying. The shoot took way longer than it should have because <laughs> we were, you know, everybody was so interested in what people were thinking. And so we would switch between uh, different playthroughs. And I I ended up watching all of Katie's playthroughs. Um, And it was amazing. I, you know, was tearing up uh, watching it, um, remembering how much work it took to (laughs) to create. Um, And yeah, I'm, I'm so proud and grateful that i got to play even a part of of the entire you know the entire package of of what it ended up being yeah not just any part honestly yeah it was fantastic <laughs> alex is just such a, a brilliant character like the writing for it was amazing your performance was fantastic so just everything about it was was really really strong and it's got to be it's got to be a good feeling for like the first big game that you do to see that kind of response and for you to be the lead as a woman of color and all of this, everything building up to this amazing response. That's gotta, you gotta be on like cloud 10, let alone cloud nine. Like I can't imagine how exciting that was to, to experience. Yeah, it was, it was completely surreal. Uh, I have to say, and, um, I am lucky enough to, you know, be the, the performer for Alex, but in all honesty, like Alex is the entire team, right? Like she's, she's the narrative team. She's the performance team. She's the animation team who like truly brought her, her nuances to life. Like it, it was everybody at, on that dev team who, who made her the character that people love. 
Yeah, it's, it's the whole thing was so fantastically done. The whole way it was designed was amazing. Even like little details, like her head leans forward and all of her hairs moving down to co- to accommodate it, like little touches right. like that that just you know they they weren't there in the previous games. And then you see them like step this up, and there's all these little extra bits and attentions to detail and you that you pick up on, especially if you're sad like me and you look for all those little tiny things and you go, "What have they been doing here?" Because <laughs> Oh, I was going to play it across two days. It came out at 5 p.m. in the UK, and I was like, I'm going to play like two or three chapters one day, play the two the next day. And I started playing it, and it, you just, I just basically had this realization about 30 minutes in and went, I'm not going to bed till I finish this, am I? So, no, <laughs> up till about 3 a.m., playing the game. <laughs> I just got hooked. I'd say. It was, oh, it was so nice to have it all in one go. Like As soon as they announced that, I thought that would be such a fab touch, because... The episodic stuff is great, but I feel like sometimes you can lose the flow. And, you know, for me personally, I, like, I prefer the first games. Life is Strange 2, I like. I didn't like quite as much as the others. And one of the big issues I had with it personally, without getting negative or anything, was there was really big gaps in between the episodes. And I feel like that mm. can harm it sometimes with the flow, because you kind of go, you know, if, if you don't have them released at a certain speed, you can kind of lose some details and things like that. Whereas True Colors, I think, and I hope it carries on if they do more games in Deck 9, definitely should. But... I think it works better if you can ha- at your own pace. If you want to break it up, you can do it at your own speed rather than, okay, here's a chapter. See you in two months. I think it, it worked a lot better. And I really, really liked that. But yeah. um, one thing I will just pick up on, I might be looking into this a bit too deeply, but you said you were on set in Deck and I when the game launched. Is that, am I looking too deeply into that or? <laughs> I mean, it's a project that I can't talk about. <laughs> so there is something. Okay, I want to share. Yeah, that is something. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I'm glad you're doing something else with them. I won't probe you on that because I know how like NDAs and things can be, but good. Because I heard <laughs> you say that and went, hang on a minute. On the day the game came, wait a minute. <laughs> the back of my head has started just rolling. I've been there hanging out with my good friends. You know, it. it 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 could be that too. Oh, honestly, yeah. But as soon as you said set, I went, hmm. hmm. Damn it. Yeah, no. Okay. You outed yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly. Um, but well, you're saying Alex is the performance team and all your creative team, and that is true. But there is only one person that got nominated for a certain award, so. Here's your little chance to flex and give a little bit. So what nomination have you got at the Game Awards? I received Best Performance. And the nomination. Damn well deserved. I was really, honestly, I was hoping because I thought, because there have been some great games that have released this year. And when they announced the nominations coming out, I thought, just how many can True Colors get, you know? Like, I was really hoping <laughs> there'd be a few across the board. And as soon as I saw they said you've been nominated for Best Performer, I was like, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing I was really hoping for. I'm not just saying that because you're I was like, I really oh, hope they don't so snub her. I don't hope they don't snub her or the game. And the game got, I think, two. I can't remember off the top of my head. It was there was games for impact was one of them, and then was it? Yeah, games for was impact. It narrative, yeah. Best performance. Yeah, I'm you for best performance. Yeah. Honestly, oh well then deserved. Best narrative, which yeah. is like. That's the one you so, want for so Life is Strange game. That's the one you want to get yes, as a nomination. Yes. Yeah. That is oh. oh my gosh! So okay. yeah, and they just won. Um, they won the golden joystick for best storytelling. Also, so I mean, yeah. this like this narrative team is just like filled with ringers. It's fantastic. It's good to see it getting the recognition it deserves. But for you, how does it feel to be a Game Award nominated best performer? What was that like when you found out about that? Uh, it was incredibly humbling. Um, I was. Obviously, just giddy um, once I, you know, got over the the initial shock, and <laughs> it was definitely a um, a learning curve for my family about like, hey, I. <laughs> was nominated but you have to vote this is like american idol yep. okay and so i really <laughs> I love yeah, that I, you got you gotta you gotta vote for it um and in all honestly in all honesty i if if people are gonna vote for anything i think it should be for the narrative and the game for impact because that is the vehicle for the entire team and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but I'm going to give it one more whack. Like, this was an absolute, <laughs> <laughs> like, team effort. Um, and those devs deserve to be recognized. 
Oh, they Absolutely. Do. Well, don't sell yourself <laughs> short, okay? Don't sell oh, yourself they short. This, they gave me this this character who was, you know, had had all of the the bones to be brilliant, right? Like I, it they made it so easy for me, um, and yeah, the the team is phenomenal. I couldn't have asked for for a better group of, of humans to work with. Oh, that's such a lovely way of putting it. But did, didn't did uh, a certain Steph VA ring you up? I think I saw the tweet that, that she, like, called you crying about it or something, was it? <laughs> she did. I was... <laughs> I was coaching at the time and I get this. It was like a, it was about three minutes, this three minute fanity riddled, joyful <laughs> voicemail. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah, it was her. And then Izzy from square were the ones who reached out and were like, Hey, look at this, look at this, this nomination. And yeah, then Katie and I had like one of our hour and a half catch up conversations Aww. and she's she's so supportive. I mean everybody has been. Um and so they've like their support helps me get excited um and helps to keep the imposter syndrome at least at bay. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep on top of it at least a little bit, you know. Yeah, exactly. They they help me sit on it, which you need like the combined weight of a few people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, it, it's it's so honestly, it's so good to see, and I really, really hope that that you manage to win. I really do. I know that narrative and game for impact yeah. is the the ones we want to see it win, but as well, but you know, it's it's so cool to see you get the nomination, and I really, really do hope you get it. But it, whether you do or not, I mean, just the nomination alone has got to be like you know, that's that's got to be enough in of itself, surely. Yeah, it was a feather in my cap that I didn't didn't anticipate and so um i'm just so glad that people have played the game and are feeling connected to alex and love the story mm, i think i think it's been so lovely and especially like i don't know whether it's just me but i don't think there's been as many games this year i, th I think it's probably more of a knock-on effect for from the pandemic still i still think that people are still reeling from that and but and obviously we all have our own taste and some people will disagree with me but there's there's, there's not been very many games that have come out this year where I've been able to talk to different friends and be like, what do you think of this bit? What do you think of that bit? And the one that stands out was True Colors. I had a good handful of people who all picked it up and we were all like nerding out over all little details and stuff like that and just going, this was so cool, wasn't it? Yeah, what do you think about that? And, and to me, that was what was so good about it. Like it was such a well-written story and such a, a brilliant game altogether that it, it pushed people to have those conversations. You know, just to talk about it, that alone shows what a good game it is if you want to, you know, pull every mate you can off the street and be like, right, what do you think of this game? Tell me, have you played it? If you've not played it, play it now. Like, honestly, it's yeah. so good. Well, the, the whole genre of narrative-driven storytelling is so fascinating to me. I loved Goosebumps books growing up. <laughs> like, I love that Choose Your Own Adventure, and this is essentially what it is, but not scary. Um well, scary and, at times, you know, Jed, sure, come on. scary at times, yeah, Jed's a real douche, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's such an interesting genre that, and, and particularly True Colors as a vehicle to explore, like, your own capacity for emotion, and it's like using True Colors almost as like a tableau to say, like, this is... This is like the emotionally resonant situation and how do I feel about it and what is it, you know, what's going on inside of me. Um, I've, I've heard from, from several people that the game wonderfully was, was able to speak to them in such a way that it made them feel safe to feel emotion or to display emotion, um, which is, you know, really <laughs> really incredible and really beautiful it's uh, yeah it, the, the whole the whole thing of emotion as a theme i think was such a beautiful thing to touch on i think it's it, yeah it's a really good as you said it's a good tableau to kind of base the whole game off of i think you know the way it explores it it was very very well written and even just like going back to the tattoo i just love the idea of there being a like a rising or a falling star depending on the day little touches like that of like emotions and like mental health and, and things like that i think would were tackled really, really well. And I think even like from a game perspective as a power, the whole thing of emotion I think was really well done. 
Good. Yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Validation. <'Cause> yay. <laughs> yes. Well, I remember when Zach pitched it to me, just, okay, it's a game about empathy and we're using emotion as the power. And I was like, how the fuck are you guys going <laughs> to yeah. make this work? Um, but they did. At least I, I think they did. They you know? did. They really did. I think just everything about it, the, like the the detailing, everything, uh, just the effort that went into it again from the whole team. Like even, you know, when you're reading certain emotions and like the whole world changes around you, like Steph said, uh, suddenly there's a storm outside. Like the attention to detail was so so well done, and you could just see the effort and the love that had been put into it. It it was so apparent to see, and just everything about it was was brilliant. And it's also good because every Life is Strange game gets me into new music, and I am now a massive MXM Tune fan, so that that helped as well. <laughs> See, bonus. Mm. Bonus. Absolute bonus. That was so funny because when she came in as the host, she was like, I'm a musician. I was like, oh, I've not heard of her. Okay. And then she's like, in the singing voice, I was like, okay. And then I listened to her music and went, okay, she's amazing. <laughs> 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 that just like the the, all, the way it can lead to different things. I, I love like, that's what I've loved about Life is Strange all this time is, you know, there's good characters, there's really strong writing, there's good themes and there's good music. It's like a, a big, yeah. it all just comes together really well. And I didn't, because I was such a noob to the Life is Strange world, um, but I didn't know that they were looking to bring on, uh, it ended up being um, Angus and Julia Stone mm. to create a soundtrack in the way that Daughter did for, I think it was Before the yeah. Storm. Um, and I love, I have loved both of those um those musicians for it seems like forever yeah and yeah. you talk about like geeking out i fucking geeked out hard <laughs> like it was not cool it was not chill when julia stone came out where i'm surprised they let me be around her because i was like freaking out to zach i was like oh my god is she gonna be a, she can be on set what should i wear um oh my god, and she was just brilliant. like so lovely and so cool and um so just naturally talented yeah the pair of them are fantastic it's it's nice as well for it to be someone who was who already had a song in the first game because I think it was it was Santa Monica Dream they had in the first game, and I've always thought that song was really really nice. It's like they, they're coming back to write a full album. I was like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's a great fit. Yeah, they're really. Yeah, they so really, really, really um, that was pretty much the only thing their their Life is Strange album was like the only thing that I listened to when it came out for like a month. <laughs> just like me yeah a new album comes out you listen to it to death and then you have to jump to something yeah. else then yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly <laughs> oh honestly so as a kind of uh, possibly last Life is Strange-ish question um, and it's probably a big one so probably going to end up having about 10 minutes if you're thinking about it now because I don't want to catch you off guard but to you out of everything so whether it being from getting cast being on set seeing the reaction afterwards what thing or things what moments stand out to you as like the real like big takeaways from your whole experience as Alex um, gosh. <laughs> this is what I meant. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a big question, but... <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a good one. I mean, all of those moments are... are in, in production. Mm. Um, in, the, in the making of her. I... The, the moments that are coming to mind are... Uh, when Zach came and rebroke the narrative arc for... Han and I, um, and and he was able to sort of paint the full the full picture of where we were going, um, and all of the times that Han would scare the absolute bejesus out of me on set, right? Like I think it was like that relationship building with Han, figuring out what the sibling dynamic between us was was going to be was such an integral part of who Alex is. Mm. Um, and it's such an integral part to this particular part of her life that this story takes place, that finding that with Han um, was was so, so, so important. And so that's one of the strongest relationships that has emerged from my time in making True Colors is my friendship with Han. Um, 
that was that has been a real touchstone for me in how Alex was created um, is always coming back to like her relationships and who she is to to people whether she knows it or not and who other people are to her um, and not just Han but all of the other cast cast members um, contributed to that maybe more than more than they know um, because I would they they gave me so much to work off of um, and to respond to and to explore that they were incredibly generous in that way. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's a good response. Yeah, Han was just his performances gave. I, I think especially what he did with it, especially considering that we all knew going into it and we saw the trailer that he was going to die, which almost is arguably like a really big spoiler. I half wish they hadn't said it, but it says a lot about the game that that we knew that going in and then it still had me crying at the funeral with the lanterns. Like I was gone. I was, I was inconsolable. <laughs> that, that destroyed me. And like a few you... times after replaying it, I've just been like, no, 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 not this scene, not this scene. <laughs> but no, 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 no. It was so <laughs> yeah. good. His performance was fantastic. And, and the relationship you two had really was, it was palpable. It was a really, really good, like strong connection. So I'm not surprised to hear you pick on that in particular. That was, yeah, it's a really, really good. Yeah, and I think both of you. bringing him back for chapter five yeah. and having that dynamic help to propel you know, the, the story forward, I think was so effective. Um, and, you know, palliative, not just for Alex, but I think for players as well, because you want more time with him. Han did such an amazing job with Gabe. The The team did such an amazing job of crafting the character of Gabe and setting him in, you know, this narrative so perfectly that you just, you crave more time with this amazing person. Um, and, you know, the, the writers gave that to to everyone at the end, maybe not in the way that, that you would hope for. Yeah. Um, for Gabe and Alex, but still in in a way that allows for catharsis and in a way closure. Yeah, that that last scene, especially on the rooftop, the with him, with her talking to his ghost, was a, was beautifully done. It was it was almost, and it's not in a bad way at all. It was almost kind of predictable when she started the conversation. You like you knew that that's that's who she was talking to, and I'm glad that where you thought it was going to go was where it went because it felt like the right direction to go. And just like you know, when he disappears at a certain time, you know, it just the whole. I think it's a really good way of closing it off, especially with him being the reason she came to Haven to begin with. For him to be mm -hmm. the bookend on either side, I think was a really good narrative choice, and it doesn't. I really wanted them. To, I wanted him to, to like tell the story of what life outside of Haven could be too. Yeah, it's like when he when he was like creating like this is what it could be like here. I was just like, yeah, it was. Yeah, what? there was such this big what thing. Next? I thought, yeah, what what, what yeah. else? Then he went. <laughs> you could just go. Can't tell you what that one, but you could just go. I was like, no, give me a story, please. No, tell me a story, damn it. Yeah, that was like, in the ending, I literally picked go and explore because I was like, well, I've seen what happens if we stay, so let's see what happens if we can. But I, I get yeah. it. That was, that was beautifully done, the whole thing. It's 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 just, a, it's a really good game. I, like, I don't know how many times I can <laughs> dance around it and say it in different ways, but it's just a really good game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really I, showing I my hand here. Uh, well, I'm biased, so you're not going to get any, <laughs> any dissent on this end. Yeah. No, I wouldn't expect it. I wouldn't expect it, honestly. <laughs> oh, what just what a great time! Just it's it's such a a brilliant game, and I I, I will it will always be very very special. And the way that it was put together is fantastic. I just I feel bad for Deck Nine now because they have got if they do do another Life is Strange game, which I really hope they do, they're gonna have a hard ass job topping what they've done there. They really are. Oh, but they're there. I think they would be up for the challenge. Just knowing what I know about the team itself. I mean, they're, they're always up for like that continuous improvement and like what's next. And um, certainly not a group of, of creators who rest on their laurels or, allow the last best thing that they've ever done to hinder them yeah at all exactly no i think that's that's a good yeah it's a good way of putting it they'll they'll keep challenging themselves i'm sure they would you know 
like it was the main challenge was writing something that beat before the storm for them you know with true colors because before the storm was fantastic in of itself you know and that was a much smaller project it was still big but you know there's less episodes there wasn't a power it was a very much more of a small contained thing and now they get they got they got given the keys it's like right go wild <laughs> yeah well and they they accept the responsibility that they have to previous games to the previous artists to the fans um they take that so 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 seriously and it it certainly is a driver in in you know, how hard they work and how much they consider you know the the choices that they make for for these games yeah no, the the effort they put in is it honestly is astounding. It really, really is. Um, I have thought of one last Life is Strange question before we start to wrap it up, and I feel like I already know the answer to this, but I just want to say it anyway. Fans are always constantly asking for Max and Chloe to come back. They 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 want them back in in like every single game. They want some kind of tie, some kind of reference. But my question to you is, if at some point they do some kind of game, either whether it's a follow on to True Colors or whether they bring characters together, whatever it might be. Would you be up for reprising your role as Alex if they asked? Of course. Alex is rad. There we go. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> I expected that answer, but I thought it'd be cool to hear it anyway. <laughs> God, how how brutal would it have been if I was like, no, I don't know. Imagine. Should yeah, you just go, you know what? I've done that. It's okay. I'll move on, you know? No, <laughs> honestly. But you know, if you did, it would be fair. You know, it would be totally fair. But at the same time, like, she's just an iconic character and I need, I need more. I, I think we, a lot of us need more. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I trust I trust the team, mm. right? I trust that um, I trust the team to not make her story derivative, or you know, they would they would be up for the challenge. They've created this complex, compelling character, and I would trust that they would be able to expand her story. Appropriately, mm, I think it would be really, really. It would be good to say, just the way that the, the character, the effect it already has on everyone. I mean, like with the wavelengths DLC, you know, you're playing through that, and and the whole time I was thinking, this is obviously I was enjoying the DLC, but I was thinking, I wonder if we'll see Alex at the end. I wonder if she'll pop up, and then you get that little, that little scene at the oh, end where you get so to see good. it from. It was so brilliant, and it was exactly how, what I hoped they would do. Just that little scene, of just here comes Alex from Steph's perspective, and it's just that little, oh, yes, a little bit more Alex. <laughs> Didn't even hear her speak, but it was like, yes, good. <laughs> it's just, it's so cool. Just, I love that because it was so cool seeing it from the other perspective. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Just it's great. Yeah, it, it's been so good to see like them have a full vision, like not just because as good as before the storm was that was obviously based on characters that already existed and while of course steph's come back that was their character anyway it's it's nice to see them create their own little pocket of the universe that doesn't rely too much on previous stuff it's like here's what we can do when we're given the keys and and it was fantastic you know it was it was a really really well done thing and uh honestly. it's cool that they've shown that they can you know create stories and and content for existing characters and they can also create worlds and stories completely on their own yeah and i think that oftentimes those skill sets are separate um but not not with tech nine no they they honestly they nail it right from the right from the get-go and you just i think it was just apparent honestly just from the launch thing like when you said when you said you and zach were recording you your little bits talking about the game and stuff, just from the way that Zach was talking about it, the way you were talking about it, it was like, yeah, you, they know what they're doing here. Like they, they've they've got a vision, then then they really just went for it. I'm trying to say other things other than just saying it's a good game. I'm trying hard here. <laughs> I am really trying. Yeah, well, and I do want to give a shout to Zach Garris because. Mm. Again, being completely new into this space, I didn't understand the task of creating a conditional branching narrative. Mm. And Zach was the one who held the entirety of the game in his head. Right? Alex sprung forth from his head, like Athena from Zeus's head, you know. <laughs> um, not Maybe not quite fully formed, but, you know, enough that, that she could drive storyline and it was just constantly in awe of his cruise directing right he's at he's in the eye of the storm basically mm. holding the vision and making sure that all of the constituent components of the game not just the story but 
the everything um, came together. And it takes a really specific type of brilliance to do that. And he never lost his shit. Like, not that, <laughs> not that I saw. I and I would have lost my shit like daily. Um, so he kept it calm. I don't. He did, and I, I can't think of another another person who could have could have done that. Yeah, no, he did. He did a great job. As did everyone. He really, really did. Um, yeah, that's it's 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 a good game. That's the last time I'm going to say that. Now that's it. Now I'm it's cutting a off. Good game. I've had my quota. I've had my quota. That's it. Now, okay, that's it. <laughs> I have to think of a different phrase if I say it again now. <laughs> um, but so that wraps off all of the life is strange themed questions so as a couple of little wrap, wrap up things first off uh i like to often ask guests what's next for you so what is next for you now are you going to try and look at some more acting things some more managing it all and what's what's your plan now what's your future going to look like do you think i would love to continue the acting thing and i i really like Video games. Um, I have a face for video games, so I think that should be <laughs> should be my lane. Um, but I am I am curious about film and television as that starts to open up again. Um, but I do I do think that a focus of mine um, and part of my heart will always be the the games part of performance. Um, so continuing to work in that space uh and i also do theater so i am in uh, a play that's going up in february here in denver um it'll be a world's premiere we just wrapped up a, a week of workshopping with the with the playwright um it's a two-hander. It's called 14 funerals and it's a comedy and i've never done comedy before so <laughs> sounds like quite the comedy <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's it's obviously a dark comedy, um, but the writing's brilliant, and I'm I'm really excited to uh, say more about it because I also think that the Life is Strange community will be really into into it. Okay, all right. Well, if you ever take it abroad, you ever come to the UK, tell me. I'll come <laughs> watch it. Okay. I sure will. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that sounds brilliant. That sounds really, really good. Honestly, yeah, it'll be good. It'd be good to catch that. But uh, but yeah. So thank you for coming on, Erica. To close us off, uh, if you want people to follow you on any social media platforms, keep up to date with where you're up to. Where can they do that? Yeah. If you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, it, my handle is the underscore Erica underscore Mori for both of them. Um, yeah, that's. That's all that I'm on. <laughs> the, the now expert Twitterer and Instagrammer now. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Right. Expect immediate responses for everything. Yeah, no doubt. No, oh, yeah. No lags in communication. <laughs> no, whatsoever. not at all. No. <laughs> well, I don't like being on my phone. Honestly, yeah. You know? Yeah, and no, so I, I just, I have to. Oh, gosh. And TikTok is so addicting that I had to take it off of my phone because. I, like a a couple friends had sent me like a few uh, a few videos and like three hours later I was like what the fuck it's like it's <laughs> one a.m. this <laughs> thing is a monster and it just it's I think it's more addictive than than any of them so yeah TikTok I obviously that, yeah. I, I obviously have no boundaries and I can't control myself, so I just had to remove it from, from my sphere. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, no. Oh, God. Oh, no, yeah. TikTok, I, I don't use it too much because I know that if I used it more, I would definitely be get roped in immediately. I'm, I'm a very... I just uh, kind of dip my toe in and then I'm like, nope, 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 because I don't want to get addicted. I can get that completely. I really right. can My little brother is like, TikTok is like your jam Erica because I grew up dancing and making up yeah. like stupid dances and I have been known to be a little performative and extra um <laughs> but I think it it just caught me too late if if any of these things had been around when I was was younger and way um less prone to shame I I definitely would have been involved <laughs> oh god <laughs> Hey, all I'll say is, same with the acting, it's never too what? late. It's never too late. It's never too late. That's you know? right. You ever want to just put a video up if you do it, go for it. You know, go for it. No inhibitions. Yeah. 
I'm gonna push it. That's right. <laughs> oh, honestly, no. That would be that would be very funny. I haven't posted anything on there myself yet. I'm thinking about it, but I'm like, do I, is that a world I want to step into? I feel like if if I do anything, I'll just take like clips from my Twitch or something. I won't actually do any dances because I don't think I have that level of bravery myself. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, like live streaming me being terrible at a game. Fine. Doing a dance? No, that's different. That's a different league. It's more like the uh, the editing. Holy fuck! I did a. I posted a like a video of of Hemi, my dog, and it took me so long to figure out the editing that it's embarrassing, and I will not share ever with anyone how long it actually took. So- <laughs> Come on, you can tell. Her. <laughs> I'll just say it took all day. And- yeah, yeah. Sometimes editing can be a bit like that. Take it from someone who. <laughs> I was just like, what? This is, no wonder this is some people's full-time job. Oh my God. <laughs> yep, yep. This is why I said to you, like, because I don't know this is the exact date at the time recording this is going to go, because it's like, I'm getting better with my ah. podcast editing, but some things, some videos I've done, like, when I've done, like, video essays and things, they can take days to edit. Because you, you get, get these little ideas, like, I want it to look like this, I want it to look like that, but, like, your idea might take two seconds, but the execution might take two hours. Like, it's, <laughs> right. it really, there's, 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 there's quite a steep increase from how long it takes to think about it and how long it takes to execute said thoughts. That's right. Well, Godspeed on that one. <laughs> Honestly, I need it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but that wraps up all the questions I've got for you, Erica. It has been an absolute pleasure. I'm so glad we got to do this. And thank you so, so much for coming on. It has been really, yes. really good. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. So that wraps that up. That was brilliant. That was really, really good. I think we got a lot of good That's stuff. That's fun. Out there. It was. It was brilliant. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad. I wanted to make sure. I was hopefully hoping you'd enjoyed it. Good. Um, oh yeah, that was really fun. I'm glad. I'm really, Honestly, really glad. Thank you. I'm so glad that this worked out. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah, but I think I made that. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to level my fan, my fanning out as best I can, but I don't, oh, I don't I think don't it's. Think you should. There's, there's no. There's no joy in trying to hold back. <laughs> well, let's be fair. I don't think I held back at all during that. How many times did I say True Colors is a good game? Like, how many times? It's such a good game. It's a good game. Do you know, I think it might be a good game. I don't know. It needs to sit with me a bit more. I don't yeah. know. Uh. You think... What kind of game do you think it is, Troy? Like, mm. bad game, an okay game, a good no, game? Yeah, <laughs> no. I should have worn... I got, actually, I got the thumb ring for the cosplay. I should have worn that while we were filming it and then just been like... Oh, yep, yeah. Yep, no, it's literally... If I can... if I can, Oh, God, I don't knock anything over. If I can reach it without breaking something... Hang on. How, 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 <laughs> That's how flexible the key. am I? There we go. The key. I've got it. I'll put it oh, on yeah. just to wrap it up. Fuck yeah. Even though we've mm-hmm. literally finished the interview, but whatever. <laughs> love it. Bonus I scene. Love a good Bonus cosplay. scene. <laughs> just... Bonus scene. It's just you with a thumbs up. Just me with a thumb. <laughs> there you go. There's the thumb <laughs> ring. Well, hey, thumb ring. There we go. The joke's finished. <laughs> oh, God. Also, I also think like Alex is one of the few people who can pull off a thumb ring. Yeah. You know? And so I like appreciate her giving that to the cosplay community because then she expands her ability to pull off a thumb ring to all, all of us. I legitimately have been wearing it more casually because of it. I actually have. Yeah. I'm like, just put the thumb ring on. I like it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And she's so cool. Yes, yeah, she is. Yes, yeah, she is. She is a very cool person. There's, there is literally, hang on, where, where is the gif? I have, I have it saved somewhere. Where is it? There is, just, <laughs> there is a gif that just sums up. Where is it? Here it is. Sent it you. See it. <laughs> I just it sums it up. It sums it up. It does. I like I truly appreciate the high levels of thirst for Alex. She's like, oh, <laughs> no, she's the interview's not over. Thing. Forget it. They say at the end of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> this is all Come getting. Come on, used. you know it. <laughs> high level of thirst. Oh my god. Yeah, there you go. Erica endorses your first tweet. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. Oh my I'm god. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize. That's it now. It's out there. Mm. It's on the internet. You've I'm said it now. There. There's no taking it back. Say it.
It's real. It's so real. <laughs> oh my god. I will just say, I'm going to cut this out, that it started echoing again, only in the last like 30 seconds. Has anything oh, okay. or something? Because well, I be can I can also do want me... Oh, where did they go? I can put on <laughs> headphones if that'll, if that'll help. If that's okay, we could do that. Because it just seems like yeah, it did it out of nowhere. It might have only been a glitch for a moment. It might be okay, but if you want to, yeah, yeah let that's me, fine. Let me grab them. Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this happened with... This happened in another interview, too, so... You do other interviews? Oh. I know. I'm such a cheater. Don't break my heart. <laughs> this was big for me. Don't ruin it. <laughs> uh, there you go. Okay. Is that, is that better? There you go. Did it, not just did it Tetris, Golden Eye, and Halo, but also headphones now as well. Just the, the biggest tech That's right. Expert. God. I mean, I can turn on a computer. <laughs> 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 You're already an Great. expert then. There you go. Sorted. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, hire me honestly. for all your technical needs. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> consultant, actor, and tech support. There we go. Mm -hmm. Another notch well, to the belt. Definitely tech support for my parents. <laughs> yeah. My mom will like call me and be like, Spotify got deleted from my phone. I'm like, is that a question? Like, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so then, I mean, I'm sure... Anyone with parents it has experienced this where you have to deliver tech support remotely on something that you can't see. It's a straight nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, also tech support. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all tech support for our parents, though, in fairness, in one way or another? Yeah. We are. It's it's the Absolutely. natural, it's the circle of life, you know? That's the circle of it life. It is the circle of life. She shoved me out of her body on May 16th all those years ago the least i can do is help find her vanishing spotify yeah you know? sounds like a good trade-off to me it sounds like a good trade-off <laughs> yeah